Hello and welcome all, Atlas here, today with another awesome character to transition into the world of Skyrim. Today I have a really interesting one to those who desire to the path of the warrior. We will be creating one of the bravest military leaders to world history. She is also known for being a fearless heroine and a historical figure as well as inspirational mascot to mad and insane person. A girl hears voices, a divine messenger, a witch, saint, knight, heretic, feminist champion, strategist, Christian, and a prophet. This amazing person that inspired so many young women and leaders to even soldiers of the French army. Of her visionary actions that turned the tide of a hundred years of war in just a matter of a couple of months. It is these deeds that are seen by some who are miraculous that create her legend. Known as the Maid of Orleans, the Messenger of God, Divine Warrior, Saint and National Heroine of France, I give you Joan of Arc. Now, as what Atlas usually does, I have been researching deep into the internet, as well as looking into books and watching films, to give us an insight on our character. The Joan we know today is a French hero and martyr, and also the Maid of Orleans, a peasant girl believing that she was acting under the divine guidance that led the French army into victory. Even Merlin the Great Wizard predicted that a young maiden of honour would sacrifice and become the saviour of France. Well, turns out he was actually right. I know, right? It's so fascinating and amazing at the same time. She is also known for her famous violent temper. When she was placed control of the French army, Joan didn't hesitate to sort out the knights for swearing, behaving indecently, skipping mass or dismissing her battle plans. I went on Google to see where the birthplace of Joan was, and I was amazed at what I saw and digitally discovered. Joan is based in an area called Domremy La Procelle. It's about 250 kilometers east of Paris, and I managed to find her house where she lived around 1428. This family home, as well as the church, the streets, are the setting for Joan. It is here where Joan makes her decision to come out of obscurity and into legend in the 15th century. During her lifetime, there would have been a lot of visionaries at large in Paris, amongst other things, most of them were female. In this kind of perception, it wasn't unusual or rare for this to happen. Joan made a lot of radical choices, seen as a divine messenger, she could have been easily accepted. A possible faculty for her unconscious deep religious beliefs could explain the voice of God that she claims to hear, but it is an extraordinary actions that people were inspired by that set her Joan apart. This is what makes her special. Whether people at the time believed in the voices, rather we believe in them now, it doesn't really matter. Joan believed them so strongly to undertake an impossible tax, and to be honest, he sounds quite an extraordinary inspiration. I would really like to visit this place sometime. I'd really love to see the place for myself one day. But anyway, moving on. For our Skyrim character bases, we'll be basing it off a character in Riften by the name of Manjol the Lioness. I know there are plenty of other Nord women in Skyrim that would fit her part in general, but I thought she stood out the most in some. I decided to base it off Manjol, because she's an adventurer and also she has a lot of similarities relating to Joan, so I thought she was an excellent pick. But anyway, let's begin. Our tale begins with a little girl named Joan. Today she confesses her sins in the church about two to three times a day. Joan says to the priest, I need to confess. The priest replied, you already confessed this morning. What terrible sin have you committed since then that can't wait till tomorrow to be forgiven? 
I saw a poor monk without shoes, so I gave him some. There's no sin in charity, Joan. They weren't my shoes. Whose were they? My father's. I'm sure he'll forgive you. He already did, but I want God to forgive me too. If we were to ask for forgiveness all the time, we spent our whole life in church. Is that bad? Well, no. But are you happy at home? Oh yes, very. And your mother? Everything is fine with her. Yes, she's wonderful. And your sister Catherine, she's still your best friend? My sister, she's just wonderful. What about your friends? You don't like playing with them. Oh yes, I play with them a lot. Everything sounds wonderful. Yes, it is. Then why are you here so often? I feel safe here. It's where I can talk to him. Him, well, I try to talk to him, but mostly he's the one who does all the talking. He never says his name. What does he look like? Beautiful. What does he say to you? He says, I must be good and help everyone and take care of myself. Do you think he's coming from the sky? Perhaps. But wherever he's coming from, I think you should listen to him because it sounds like he's giving you good, very good advice. It's wonderful. After that, she skips out of the church, glad to be forgiven by God and wandering away from her village. Then, all of a sudden, she has a strange and violent supernatural vision and she returns to find her village burning. Joan can only watch as English soldiers murder and do horrible things to her sister. She survived the attack and goes to live with her distant relatives. Joan is really upset and demands that she seeks the priest. Why did she have to die? Only God can answer that. I know God says to love your enemies, but I can't. I just want the English to burn in hell forever and ever. I realize you're angry, Joan, but we must learn to forgive. It's hard. Revenge will never bring about peace. Then what will? What will bring her back? And why did she have to die in the first place? Instead of me, why didn't he take my life instead of hers? It was my fault. I was late. She gave me a hiding place. Calm down, Joan. Calm down. I don't pretend to know God's will. But one thing I am sure. The Lord always has a good reason. Perhaps he chose you because he needs you for some higher calling. As long as you answer that call, your sister will not have died in vain. I don't want to wait for his call. Be patient. I want to be with him always. Soon you will be able to take part in your holy mass. When you eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, you will be at one with him. A few years later, our little girl is now a fully grown woman and she is now famous in all of France that she is the saviour to save it. Soon to be King of France, Charles VII receives a message from Joan requesting an army to lead into battle. Charles thinks he should let her meet, but his advisers say she may be an assassin. The king's mother-in-law, Yarland of Aragon, says that Joan should be seen because she believes that the people see her as the saviour of France and she could be to save them from the English. Joan arrives at Chinon and right away Charles is warned again that she could be an assassin and to remind him of the rumours that people have been saying about her she could be a witch or sorceress claiming that she hears voices. Charles comes up with a plan to let someone pretend to be him. That way, if she is an assassin, she will kill the wrong man. And if she is truly sent by God, she will know who the real future king is. Joan stands in the middle of the throne, in a room surrounded by royalty and people she's never even seen before. The room fell into a deep silence and whispers of judgement started to begin. She tells the man sitting on the throne, I can see you are a good man, but you are not the king. I am sorry to insist, but I must see the king. We have no time to lose. 
Where is he? He's here. Find him yourself. Joan started to slowly walk around the room, from the crowded people. She finds Charles in the corner, accompanied by three senior knights. Then suddenly, in a fast motion, they pulled out their daggers to her throat. And eventually, Joan tells Charles in a whisper, I have a message from the Kingdom of Heaven, for you and only you. And in the private audience, she explains her visions and declares that she is to leave the French army to victory against the English. And predicts that only then will you become the King of France. The court wants to give Joan an army and they wanted more additional proof that she has been sent by God. The court specifically appointed a group of women to proceed to verify her claim of maidenhood. The testing continues as a question whether her knowledge of warfare is good enough to command an army to additional demands of extraordinary kinds of proof. Joan replies that she did not come to perform tricks. The fact that she had travelled through enemy territory in a journey of Chinon without being killed should have been more than enough proof anyway. Eventually, after hours of questions, they agreed with her terms and were sent into war. Joan equipped her armour and a long white banner leads the French army to the besiege city of Orleans, which was under military command of John de Duois. Joan arrives with her attendant Alan and the senior knight, standing in front of a rough model of the city and its surroundings. Joan points out to the boulevard of Des Torres, suggesting an attack there. The other knights see her plan is reckless and makes no sense, and even admitting they are not used to taking orders from a girl. Joan really was frustrated and slaps the knight, and with the help of Alan, she cuts her hair short like a man. Joan writes a letter to the English, transcribed politely requesting they surrender, and they responded and disagreed. The commander showed the scepticism of Joan's leadership by starting the next morning's battle for the stockade at St. Loup. Without her, by the time she arrives on the battlefield, the French soldiers are already retreating. Joan at this point is hell-bent on rage with her soldiers. Disobedient, she ends the retreat and leads the army into another charge. She says to the soldiers, follow me and I will give you victory. Her horse leaps into the fort and she lowers the drawbridge, allowing her army to rush inside and they are victorious. After that, the French salvage all English equipment and whatever they could get their hands on. Even the commander said this is an impressive stronghold, a mighty victory, that it will be much more difficult to take it from the French now. As for the English army, they were advancing and recruiting on the other side of the river and the French and the English armies moved to face one another on the large open grassy field. Joan rides out alone towards the English and shouts at them that this is their chance to surrender and a return to England. The English archers advanced and moved forward which prompts the French archers to ready themselves. Then the mounted English knights then moved forward and then suddenly they turned and slowly they went right away. The English infantry followed the suit, is left with no choice but to retire from the field themselves. The French cheered and congratulated Joan as she freed Orleans and said it was a miracle and could not believe of what just happened. And so her legend begins. Well, I really enjoyed that story and I hope everybody did too. Quite an extraordinary story, to be honest, and a really, really brave woman. Really amazing. But anyway, I can't wait to start our character build now. It'll be interesting to see what our character will look like in Skyrim. But anyway, before I start, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and keep up with all the juicy updates. But anyway, let's get straight into the action. Let's go.
Okay, and here we are. We are in our character creation menu. So, okay. Um, okay, so um, let's get into the uh, uh, the races as we know. Okay, personally, I might go with nodes. So, the citizens of the Skyrim, they are all tall and fair haired people, strong and hardly nodes are famous for their resistance to cold and their talent as warriors. They can use battle cry to make opponents flee. I guess that'll be a good start, I suppose. Okay. So okay, I'm just gonna go with nerds, okay? So alright, so let's change this to the Oh wow. Oh look at that. <laughs> as you know, right, I've literally just turned it over and I haven't even done a thing yet. I guess Skyrim has got has got a mind of its own, like what we're about to do. So okay, um, right. Let's let's just change this a little bit. Um, okay, uh, so let's get rid of the weight. Okay, so let's let's just have a little look at this, shall we? Because she already looks great as it is. So um, let's just have a little look. Complexion. Uh, I guess we could give it a little bit of mud, I suppose, you know, with with the war and stuff like that, like, you know. Um, dirt colour. Yeah, I guess we could have a little... Nah, let's just keep it... Nah, I'm going to keep it plain, actually. Made my mind up. Sorry about that. Yep, i keep that normal, normal. Keep that all the same. Okay, let's go right up to the top a minute. Uh, nose type. So, this is the one thing I am going to change. So, um... Uh, let me just have a little look a minute to see what different types of noises they have. Um, okay, yes, I guess we could go for that one. I know height, I suppose. Um, bear with me a minute. I just like to see uh, something. Um, let me just have a little look a minute. Okay, um, yeah, I say we keep it to about there. So just do exactly as I do. Just pay close attention to it as well, because this is going to be a really detailed video, as we know. So okay, um, let's just have a little look at the nose. All right, that's way too long. So I, I just want that slightly in. That's great. Okay, um, jaw width. Yeah, we could slightly. I say we could slightly open that up a bit. Um, about there, I'd say. Oh, wait a minute. Um, yeah, I guess we could put it to about there. Jaw height. Uh, yeah, we could have it slightly... I say... Slightly up a bit like that. That's great. Alright, jaw forward. Um, let me just have a little look a minute. Uh, just keep that to about there, I'd say. So that's fine. Okay. Alright, cheekbone height. Uh, let me just have a little look. Uh, personally, I don't want them too high, but I want to keep them exactly, yeah, I say like that. It looks like we go slightly over a bit. Brilliant. Uh, cheekbone width. So. Obviously, like as we know, we're, we're definitely going to go through all the body modifications, like they give us on this. Uh, nah, we're not going to do that. I want to keep a uh, laugh lines, no mm, cheek color lower, no nose color. Nah, I say it just I say it looks great as it is, to be honest. So, like you know, she already looks amazing as it is, and you know we've only done like a couple of touches, like I was already done, and she looks pretty good as it is. So let's just have a little look at the eyes. I mean, <laughs> Some of them are <laughs> very strange, like eye, like depth and stuff like that, like you know, in this, like, um, nah, it's definitely not that one we need. So, um, nah, um, give me a second. Uh, yeah, I'd say, give me a second. Just wants to get this right, so it looks. That one looks not too bad, but nah, it's a little bit slanted though. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I'm just just going through it a minute just to see which is the best one to pick. Um, nah. um yeah, it's not bad. 
Okay, um, I'm gonna make my mind up and go with uh, this one. That looks great. Um, eye colour. Uh, let's just have a little look anyway. Like, if there's any good, I might just stick with the one that I previously had. Um, uh, some of these look really scary. Really cool, too. Uh, look at that. That's a zombified. <laughs> it's pretty cool, look. Especially that. That's all, like, bloodied up. Um, <laughs> scary looking. Um, like, I don't like the look of that one. That's just really, really, like, Void black eyes like like that's creepy like you know. Um, nah, let's just let's just stick with the blue originally because I I'm quite happy with that. Um, okay, uh, let's lower this down a little bit. Joe, you know she already looks like great so far. Like as I've done as I'm doing it. Like right, I depth. Right, I want them to yeah, slightly in, but not too much. I depth. Um, let me just have a little look. I don't want them too much, and I don't want them too in. So just keep that in the middle. Eyeliner. Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think they really would make her back then, back in like 1428. Like you know, but it's up to you. You can add whatever you want to it. Like you know. But um, personally, I'm not gonna add any of that. I'm just gonna keep that as it is. Um, right, eyebrows. Um, okay, let's just see. Um, yeah, not bad, not bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess we could go with that one. That looks great. Right, eyebrow height. Slightly. Slightly up, I'd say. Up there. Alright, uh, slightly over. Alright, I brought forward. Uh, I don't want them too forward too much, like, I'm just, I'm just gonna keep them in the middle. Uh, mouth. Okay, let's just change this a minute. Okay, uh, I'd say. Just, just come through them all a minute, just, just to see which is, which is good. Um, okay, nah. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's a good one, I suppose. That all that looks good. Okay, let's drop this down a little bit. I don't want it too low, like down there. That's, that's too much. Oh, I want to say, say about there. I'd say. I don't want a chin pointy though, that's for sure, so I don't want it too wide either, so I don't have it here. So, don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna round that off anyway, like, you know, a hatch in length. Brilliant. So, I want it slightly down, just a little bit, like that, ah, that's great. Chin forward, uh, uh, let's just have that in the middle, because that'll be great. Right, lip colour. Um, no, we definitely don't want that. Um, I don't know, I guess a good red colour would be good. Well, there's even black. But, nah, we don't want that. Like, I don't know, red, that looks kind of cool. But, um, nah, I'm gonna go with... I'll tell you which one now. Okay, um... Right, okay. Sorry about this, and just seeing which is... The better one. Um, okay, I guess I could go with that one. That looks great. Right. I'd say she's pretty much done, I suppose. But anyway, I'm just going to check the hairstyle a minute, just in case. Let's just see. So, at the moment, I'm quite happy with that one so far, because that looks cool. That looks great. You can see, like, it is definitely her. So, let me just see a minute what different types of ones they've got. Um... Oh, wow, look at that. Now, I suppose that could be, like, a different, like, I don't know, say, like, a different version of her in this in this game. Like, that could be, like, the game Skyrim version of her. Like, well, that, that could be an optional look, I suppose. But, yeah, but 
that <laughs> that's cool. I I gotta admit that that is awesome. But um, let's just have a little look at the slightly more cut versions. Okay. I mean less cut versions. I mean. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah, that's the one I originally have. I just want to scroll through a minute. Um, yeah, not bad. Um, nah, it's got a ponytail on it. Um, let's just keep going a minute. Okay, that's okay, but it's not quite there. And that's a definitely no. That's more like Celtic, I'd say. <laughs> more Viking looking. Um... Yeah, I guess that's nice. Let me just keep looking. Okay, I guess that could be the the XL version to what the buzz cut was. But yeah. But yeah, that could work, but it's not quite there. And it's even like nah. Nah, that's too far. Um Right, personally I might just go back to the original one that I saw that we were had in the beginning. Cause the one we we originally have like that one is that's great okay so now i guess we'll go on to a close now on her armor to see which is like you know the optional versions like but, but anyway let's get into it so i say she's pretty much done i suppose let's just give her a name
Your family was noticeably absent from the walls. Now I know why. Wouldn't the dagger in the back have sufficed? You think this is personal? The Empire has no place in Skyrim. Not anymore. And you? You have no place in Whiterun anymore. A convenient position to hold now. But mark my words, old man. The days to come. Ulfric will spread his rebellion thin. And what then? We need the Empire as much as it needs us.